The following is a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC. Rare Collectibles TV is proud to announce that we will now be offering a vast array of military collectibles used during the most significant events in our country's history. Antique firearms, swords, military flags, uniforms, and more. Surviving examples of these historic relics tell the story of our great nation's never-ending fight for freedom, ranging from the American Revolution and the Civil War to World War I and II. Each of these historic, museum-quality collectibles that we are offering is a national treasure and justly deserves to be displayed in your military collection. And many of these rare military collectibles that we offer have been used by American citizens in real battles to uphold and protect our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Each of these items you see today has been authenticated by firearms expert and military appraiser, Peter Carlin. With over 30 years of experience, Peter has certified rare military artifacts from every era of American history. The authentic military relics that Peter showcases and more can be found at rarecollectiblestv.com. And here to tell you about some rare Civil War military artifacts is Rare Collectibles TV's co-founder and senior buyer, Jack McNamara. Right now, we're in one of the most important cities in American history, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was on Gettysburg Battlefield over 150 years ago that the Union of the North and the Confederacy of the South came face to face in a head-on battle during the Civil War. During this battle, Union Major General George Meade's Army of the Potomac defended their ground against a relentless attack from Confederate General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. From July 1st to July 3rd, 1863, these two armies battled each other head on for three days without rest. After numerous engagements across the battlefield, Robert E. Lee and his army were pushed back by George Meade's Army and were forced to retreat. The victory by Meade and his army has now gone down in history as the most vital turning point of the American Civil War. Here in Gettysburg, we've uncovered a vast hoard of American military swords. Some of these were used on the actual battlefields of the Civil War, and some of these are even earlier. This unprecedented collection of Civil War swords is a treasure trove like nothing that we have ever seen before. It took over 40 years to assemble this collection of remarkable Civil War swords. And now today, these one-of-a-kind Civil War artifacts are available to you for the first time ever. Here to tell you more about this incredible collection of Civil War swords is antique firearms expert and renowned military appraiser, Peter Carlin. With over 30 years experience, Peter has certified military from the most significant periods of American history, including the Revolutionary War, World War I, World War II, and of course, the Civil War. Each of the military relics that Peter shows today has been personally authenticated and certified by him. And now, here's Peter Carlin. One of the biggest areas of collecting of Civil War artifacts is the sword. And here we have examples of various different types that were used by officers and cavalrymen and artillerymen during the war. This is a really fantastic example here of different grades and different types. And during the Civil War, the officers typically wore the swords other than the cavalrymen, which wore basically the utility sword, the cavalry sword. And there are so many different makes and models and types and regulations that were followed by the, both the Union and the Confederate armies that apply to this area of collecting. 
Some of these swords came out of a very, very famous sword collector's collection in the Northeast, and, and, and I'll point some of those out. And these swords had been stored for 40 years plus, and we had the, the pleasure a while back to go to Gettysburg and, and look at the swords and, and source some of the swords for Rare Collectibles TV. The sword was not only a weapon, but it was also a designation of statute and prestige, if you will. And so some of the swords that you'll see here, they have that kind of flash. They're what you call presentation grade swords. For example, this one here, this one is just an absolutely stunning example of a Civil War non-regulation cavalry officer sword. And this one is probably just about as good as it gets for condition and form. Uh, you see the big scroll engraving uh, in the basket. It's got a, a, a nickel, a German silver, solid German silver grip, engraved mounts, and of course, a beautifully engraved blade. This one was an import, and it's made by Clement & Young, which is a German firm out of Solingen, Germany. And actually, it was retailed by uh, Sour Bear of New York. The Sour Bear was a very famous sword company in New York City during the Civil War. They made really high-grade presentation swords. This is one example. This would be uh, used by a cavalry officer. It was a really flashy sword, a really high-grade sword, um, compared to the working man's cavalry sword, which is what we have here. This is an 1860 cavalry officer sword. You can tell the difference of the form and the flavor, if you will. This one is manufactured, I believe, by Ames, which is another very famous maker of swords. But this one was like a regulation sword. This would be used by just about every cavalryman in the Union Army. And this is just a really nice, honest example. It's got all the leather. It's got a nice chocolate patina. Really, really nice, honest sword. So you can tell the difference between an officer sword, very high grade, and the working cavalryman sword, like this one. So the swords that you're looking at, they date back to the 1830s, to the Seminole War era and the Mexican War era. For example, this one is an eagle head, and it's a really like a presentation grade eagle head. This was probably 1830s, 1840s. Just a fantastic example of an early American sword. So this one would be used by militia officers during the Mexican War and during the Seminole Wars. And this one is just an outstanding example. It's got a lot of beautiful engraving. It's got this little engraving here on the scabbard. You can see how finely engraved it is. It's got custom grip. The feathers on the head are just outstanding in every way. It's got all of the fire gilding on it. It's got this outstanding blue panel blade that you see. And it's really hard to find a blade in this condition from this era. With the wear that they would sustain over the years, sometimes there would moisture would get trapped in the scabbard and it would corrode away. This one is just just absolutely stunning example of an early American Eagle Head militia officer sword dating from the 1830s to the 1840s. A couple other examples of different swords here. There's some of my favorites. This one is probably my favorite on the table. And this one likely was uh, retailed by a firm in New York called Ball and Black Company. And this one is just unbelievable in its form. Look at the hilt on that sword. It has this beautiful Medusa head on the hilt, as you can see. It's got this quillion of a lion head and it's just got what we call the high art form of the American sword. Beautiful fire gilded on the hilt. The grip is in great shape. The scabbard has some commensurate wear. It's got nice engraving on the mount. And obviously, it's got a really beautifully engraved blade with a panoply of arms with the American eagle, e pluribus unum, and just all the military motif that you want to see on a really beautifully engraved American sword. As one of the most significant time periods in American history, 
the Civil War era of 1861 to 1865 truly stands out as a time that defined our country's beliefs and values. As a result, relics of the Civil War, such as military swords, muskets, pistols, cartridge boxes, and even American flags are among the most precious collectibles available in the United States of America. And now today, these artifacts from the Civil War, when the North battled the South, are available for your very own personal collection. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the Militaria icon. These items are in limited supply, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available. And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic Militaria items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. Each of these exclusive early American artifacts tells a story about the earliest times of struggle, hardship, and ultimately triumph of our glorious nation during a time period when civil war was taking place on our country's own soil. With such compelling stories to tell, each of these stunning military collectible pieces can rightfully belong in a museum exhibition. Acquire your museum quality piece of American history today while you still can. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the Militaria icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. So you could see that, you know, a lot of the hilts or the handles are different. They're different forms and they're different kind of regulation swords. There's like an 1850 foot officer sword or a general staff officer sword. You have the cavalry officer sword. You have a staff and field officer sword here. This is a really, really beautiful sword. This is again a presentation grade Civil War sword. It's got a solid silver handle. It's got just unbelievable mounts on this sword, high relief with acanthus leaves and engraving with geometric pattern throughout. All the engraving on the scabbard, that's just the outside, right? So then obviously you pull the blade out and it has a beautifully engraved blade. This was a German imported blade. It has again all the military motif. It has leaf and scroll engraving on here, it has some Latin phrases, U.S. intertwined letters. Just a beautiful, beautiful, high-grade, presentation-grade Civil War officer sword. So the hilts basically kind of told which kind of regulation sword they were. There were regulation swords and there were non-regulation swords. For example, um, you can tell some have the big basket, some are cavalry officers, some are staff officers, some are staff and field officers. This one is a really interesting and, and very hard to find sword. This is a non-regulation cavalry officer sword from the Civil War and it's an eagle head. So an eagle head was an early earlier form, like we looked at uh, prior, we looked at this 1830s period sword. This sword basically followed that tradition of the eagle head pommel and, and wrapped it into a cavalry officer sword from the Civil War. This is probably from the 1840s through the Civil War this was manufactured. It's got this simple branches on the guard to protect your knuckles. It's got the eagle head. It's got a beautiful original brown patina finish. This brown finish is actually the factory brown finish that it came with, which is really incredible to find. But the money shot on this sword is absolutely stunning. And that's the blade. And the blade on this is just second to none. It's just a frosty, like dead new blade. 
It's got this beautiful eagle. You can see the frost on the background of those panels. On the other side, I'm gonna show you, got this beautiful panel with US in a frosty panel. And it's just a fantastic sword in every way. You can't get a better a blade than that. That's just virtually dead brand new. It's a very rare form to find. It's non-regulation, it's got an eagle head, it's got the, the patriotic motifs, it, the condition is about as best as you can find. And this was actually out of that very, very well-known sword collection in the Northeast. So when you talk about regulation and non-regulation swords and presentation grade swords, a lot of these were like tailor-made for the soldier. They would basically custom order these swords and the swordsmiths like Ames or Horseman or Ball and Black Company or Sour Bear, they would basically take that order and they would custom make the sword. There were certain swords that were kind of more mass produced, but those were like the cavalry swords that we talked about. The regulation cavalry sword that was issued to the, the most of the cavalry troops that served in theater. Or, for example, this is a Ames artillery sword. And this is an artillery sword. This is a regulation sword. This was made in mass, unlike the other high-grade, presentation-grade swords. A sword like this, like the cavalry sword, or this one, they were kind of mass-produced. So if you're ever looking for a gift for a surgeon or a doctor or somebody in the medical field, I have the one for you. And it's found right here in the form of an 1840 pattern medical staff officer sword from the Civil War. And this one was basically, they started making these in and around 1840, and they made these for medical staff, for surgeons, for medical staff, for people on, on the hospital corps, the medical staff. And this one is a really, really nice example. You can see it's got a very unique, small uh, hilt. It's got like a little egg corn on the top of here. A lot of acanthus leaves, a very, very diminutive hilt. And on the languette here, there's a, an applied in silver is MS for medical staff. And this would be issued to surgeons. This wasn't a sword that they would use in combat. This was a dress sword that they would use. It's got some beautiful mounts on it. On the middle mount, it's got a, a, a Roman soldier, a spread-winged eagle here, panoply of arms down on the bottom. And then the blade, it's got a beautiful frosty blade on it with all the motifs that you like to see on an American sword, American shield. There's actually, believe it or not, this is an incredible feature right here. You have a soldier on the blade with an American flag, and it looks like he might be a Zouave. Yeah, he's actually a Zouave soldier who, that they fought in the, in, in the Civil War. Doesn't get much better than that. The other side also, here's another great feature on the sword. This is just a really spectacular example, is USMS, United States Medical Staff, on the blade. So this one is a really, really nice example. They started making them in the 1840s, and medical staff were issued these. Sometimes they would be private purchased, but this is just a really kind of nice, rare medical staff officer sword from the Civil War. A lot of these swords, especially the presentation grade ones and the non-regulation swords are one of a kind. They're the only ones that we have like that. They're on the website to buy and to purchase. If you see something here that you like, don't hesitate. Please go on. This is just a small sampling of what we have on the website. So go to Rare Collectibles TV and enjoy your shopping experience. And now today, these artifacts from the Civil War, when the North battled the South, are available for your very own personal collection. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the military icon. These items are in limited supply. So make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available.
And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic Militaria items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the Militaria icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. And here to tell you more about the exclusive artifacts of the Civil War is antique firearms expert and renowned military appraiser, Peter Carlin. Another preferred weapon during the Civil War that you'll see images of all the time is the fighting knife or the bowie knife. And these were knives that they would carry into combat. It would be a backup weapon in close quarters combat. It would be something to use in camp to cut wood or brush or, or, or serve as a utility tool. And we do have some examples here on the table. There's a really nice one here that I like. It's kind of one of my favorite. And this one is a Bowie knife. It's probably made between 1840 through the Civil War, this example. The, a lot of them were made in England. They're, they're called Sheffield Bowie knives. They were make, made in Sheffield, England, because that was like the hub of the Bowie knife and the knife making guild in England at the time. There was a big market for these in America and elsewhere throughout the world. And this one is a really nice example. It's got the original scabbard, and believe it or not, this, this actually is called a frog. It's got the original frog, um, which is really hard to find. And this is just a nice, a nice size Bowie knife. Just imagine. I mean, just imagine this coming at you in the heat of combat. This one was actually made by Unwin and Rogers in Sheffield, England, and this is a nice example. It's got a really thick, thick spine. It's got great balance. It's got a stag grip. It's got this beautiful cross guard, and this is an example of one of the Bowie knives that would be carried in the Civil War by either the Union or the Confederates. Another form of Bowie knife or fighting knife that uh, was used in the Civil War, I'm going to grab these two right here is what's called a cutlery handle Bowie knife. And this is an example of a Bowie knife or a dirk. Sometimes they're, they're a fighting dirk that were used during the Civil War. This one is actually a really nice example. It was basically kind of a silver cutlery handle that they made. Has this beautiful original scabbard. The scabbards are hard to find with the Bowie knives because they were sometimes made of like pasteboard. They would fall apart in the elements and they would just be lost to history. This one is all complete. The nice thing about this one is the blade. The blade is spectacular on that. It's found in, in the original polish, and it's just a really nice, honest example. The scabbard actually did the job protecting the blade throughout all those years. This was probably manufactured in the 1850s or so, because that's when a lot of the cutlery handle Bowie knives were made, or the Bowie dirks. This one is a really nice example. It has a, a Sheffield maker on the blade. It's in great shape. It comes originally with the, the original scabbard, and it's just a really kind of an attractive little fighting knife. And this would probably be used more by an officer than a fighting man, if you will. The other one that I picked up here that's kind of really interesting, I looked at this one when I first got it, and I said, hmm, this is a German sword. It's made of a German hilt, right? But the date on it, on the blade, 1859. And this is what they call a scorpion tip blade. Okay, look, you see the form of that blade. They call it a scorpion tip on that blade. This is a fighting knife. This was used for fighting. This is a combat knife. It was manufactured by E.S. Young, who was a, a German sword maker in Solingen, Germany in the mid 19th century. And this fighting knife is actually crafted from a full length sword. So something happened to the sword, it, it, it broke. These swords were imported a lot during the Civil War, and if there was damage sustained, they would take it, they would repurpose it, and that's exactly what we have here. We have a repurposed sword that was remade into a fighting knife for the Civil War, and it's just got a great feel. It means a lot of business. It's got this improvised S-guard to, to, to cover your knuckles, and it actually has a nice, 
original leather sheath with a belt loop on it. And so this one came in another collection that we found, and this is a Civil War era fighting knife, could have been used by the North or the South. So the artillery played a major part in the Civil War. During the Battle of Gettysburg, it was the largest artillery fire in the Western Hemisphere to date, and there was a, a giant artillery barrage or a salvo that happened in Gettysburg. Artillery men were fierce fighters, they meant business, and over here is a really interesting and highly sought after rig, what we call, for a artillery men during the Civil War and pre-Civil War. These actually date to about the 1840s, but they were still used during uh, the Civil War. And this is a heavy artillery sword. It kind of is reminiscent of a gladiator sword. If you look at the hilt, it's got the scales on the hilt, it's got the eagle there, and it's got this massive blade. And this would be used for defense, for uh, as a weapon, but also for clearing brush, for artillery emplacements, for mortar emplacements, stuff like that. But this is, uh, it's dated 1843, which is kind of like Mexican War period. So these were used, you know, from the Mexican War all the way through the Civil War. This one is just an absolutely fantastic example. The blade is in great shape. It's not beat to death. It's got a lot of, a lot of shine to it. It does have some wear. This one actually was made, if you look here, it was made by N.P. Ames, who was the maker of swords that people like to collect. And this one, the interesting thing about this one is it has, it has the scabbard and it has this beautiful buff leather interlocking belt, U.S. belt and plate. So here you go. You have this U.S. belt and this would be worn around the waist of an artillery gunner during the Civil War. This one is in just absolutely really nice shape. These are hard to find. They're very sought after. People love these in their examples of their artillery gear. And this is just a really, really spectacular example that's available right now at Rare Collectibles TV. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the military icon. These items are in limited supply, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available. And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic military items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. Acquire your museum quality piece of American history today while you still can. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com and click on the military icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. The proceeding was a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC.